How are we doing guys? Always to be Robin 1, Leeds 2, absolutely massive win, absolutely massive win. Um, you know, in the terms of the way we got the win, that is a big difference. That is a big difference between this season, last season and all previous Leeds seasons. There's no way we would have won that game in previous seasons. You know, we've had to do that a lot this season, had to show good character in that lot. Let's not get away from it. We weren't at our best today. In any stretch of imagination, we were not at our best today. But we got ourselves an important win and we were much, much better in that second half. We made a crucial change. I'm going to go through that all in the review and that lot, but first of all, it's massive. You know, we've built a bit of a gap. Again, it's all about what we do, but it's a little bit of a boost seeing Norwich and Sheffield United playing each other today. Um, it gives us that little bit more leeway against Norwich next week, but still, at the end of the day, it's about what we do at this season. It's not about what Norwich do if Norwich drop points, if Sheffield United drop points, etc. Et it's got to be all down towards. That's the only way we can look at it. We can't be relying on results, etc., etc. But luckily, we've got two. Uh, we've got one that's come through today that's affected two teams at once, which is, has to be a good thing. Um, but yeah, onto the game itself. So we went four-one-four-one, very much as expected. Uh, Kiko Kasim in goal, right back Luke Aylin, centre backs Calvin Phillips, Liam Cooper, left back Eshan Ayoski, uh, hold midfield Adam Forshaw. On the right was Jack Clark, centre mids Mateus Click, Pablo Hernandez, left hand side was Jack Harrison, through the middle, Kemal Roof, and to be honest, the first half was shocking. I have to be honest, the first half was absolutely shocking for us. You know, not just the fact that we went in one down, I didn't feel we did deserve to be in one one down, to be honest, I thought both teams were poor in that first half, nothing really happened. One shot on target, it's an absolutely superb finish off there. Um, Ajayi he was centre-back playing sort of the whole midfield role, great run, great goal, and to be fair to Rotherham, they have to be happy that first half from, from their end, the... It is very much what Stoke did against us, totally restricted the spaces, gave us no spaces to attack into, and he made the 4 1 4 1 turn into a 4 5 1. There was so much space between the midfield and Kemal Roof, we couldn't really have a go at Rotherham, we couldn't really get into the tight pockets of space where we could really cause problems and that, like, you know, with our movement and maybe a little bit of pace and technical ability, we could not make the most of that at all. And to be fair, Rotherham, I have to say, they did well in that point of view. I don't think they really did much on the ball, causing us problems, you know, they get that goal. Other than that, we dealt coached decently. It was just a poor first half. You know, I thought it was one of the worst halves of football I think I've seen all season. Um, certainly from in terms of entertainment, just nothing happened in that first half. But then second half, half time, I think Bielsa was probably giving the bollocking of all bollockings because there was no intensity at all from the team today in that first half. Sorry, it was just totally unlike a Marcelo Bielsa team. It was passing sideways, sideways, backwards, sideways, sideways, and just nothing was sort of happening. And I don't think Marcel Bielsa can stand to watch that. I think he'd rather lose the game 3-4-0 than, than for his team to be seen playing football like that. So I expect it probably was the bollocking of all bollockings. Um, we changed to a 4-2-3-1. Tyler Roberts comes on for Jack Clark, and we look much better. You know, I think sort of everything sort of changed from that sort of moment. You know, we allowed Pablo to move on to the left, out wide, where he's got a little bit more creative freedom. He can drift into different pockets of space, he can go through the 10 roll, he can go out wide, he can cut inside, he can go outside, etc. etc. He's got a little bit more freedom when he plays on the left, he can drift out onto the right. And when you give him that free roll, it moves the defence around, and it moves the opposition around, it gives him something else to think about. You know, don't get me wrong, Pablo's done fine when he's played in the midfield. I just don't think we quite get the same creativity from Pablo when he's playing out wide, because when he plays out wide, He's probably the most creative player in the championship, to be honest. To be honest, I, I can't think of anyone more creative. Um, or yeah, certainly not in our team. You know, I think he's it, just different. It's, it's just such a difference when he plays out wide for me. Um, Matthias Click, Adam Forshaw, I thought did really well when they played sort of a midfield tandem. Obviously, Adam Forshaw was doing most of the defensive work, um, with Matthias Click being allowed to play box to box and just uses energetic, you know, running from one end of the pitch to the other, you know, throughout the game. I felt he was doing that and certainly when he changed to a four two three one, he had that freedom then with Adam Forshaw holding to just play box to box and obviously he gets him two goals at the end of the day. Um Tyler Roberts, I'll be honest, it wasn't really impressed with him in that ten roll. I don't think he's really done anything in that ten roll, if I'm being honest. I'm, you know, I really do like Tyler Roberts, but I see him as more of a centre forward than number ten, if I'm being honest, I don't think he quite has that. I don't think he's quite got the he's not so much awareness. He's got good awareness. I think he sometimes just over hits things. Just not quite your execution, I don't think. You know, to play in Kamal Roof in that ten roll for me, I don't think so, enough sort of happens um, from his side of things. But the, you have to say that substitution did change the game because it allowed certain players to move into their best positions at the end of the day, which was good to see. The first goal, the first goal is a bit of a blur. It's a little bit lucky at our end, but great ball off um, Pablo Hernandez, and the touch makes the goal really off Mateus Click. It's a good touch. It's created that panic. It's created that little bit of space. A bit of a bit fortunate how it's come back to him and now the keeper's not really the keeper probably should save it. It's gone in um, at the end of the day, but the touch makes that goal and the touch 
deserve the goal, to be honest with you, I felt. Um, I'd have to see it again. I've only really seen it once live, so maybe maybe I'm being a little bit too um, generous there, but I felt Matthias Click did deserve that goal for the run and touch um, for his part in that goal as well. And then after that, I just felt we dominated. You know, I felt we really did start to dominate, but just that final pass, that final decision and that lot just wasn't quite there. You know, we had sort of half chances of Kemal Roof, lovely little lofted pass off Pablo Hernandez on that left wing. Kemal Roof totally missed it, to be honest. It wasn't an easy header at all, but it went well wide. It wasn't, again, could you really call it a chance? But then probably the biggest chance before we scored, fell to Ezra Ioski. Little ball in off uh, Jack Harrison. And to be honest, if Ezra Ioski left, left it, you know, not having to go to Ezra Ioski, Roof probably would have scored. Um, I felt, you know, in the group chat, that's what we said at the time. Um, but yeah, it just went wide off Ioski, but he wasn't to know that Kemal Roof was in the better position. He was looking the other way at the end of the day. But we get ourselves that winner. We kept going, kept battling. We had control in that second half, which is good to see. Um, it doesn't like excuse the poor first half performance, but it does sort of make up for things. It did sort of justify us getting the win at the end of the day. Um, great ball off um, Jack Harrison again. Through ball into um, Matthias Click. Matthias Click gets it onto his left foot, shows great composure. He's got loads of defenders around him. He's not really at the best of angles and just gets a lovely connection with it, his left foot. And it's a typical Matthias Click goal. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of sort of criticism I felt of Matthias Click over the last couple of weeks for his lack of goals, but to be fair, what is that, seven goals, six assists in January? There is not a centre mid in this league who's contributing more goals, scoring more goals, making more goals than Matthias Click. There is just isn't. You know, you can throw out, out people like Bradley Dack, etc., but Bradley Dack's a number ten. At the end of the day, Matthias Click is playing deeper. He's gonna have less attacking opportunities. He's doing really well for me in that point of view. He's been absolutely superb. He's simply you cannot ask for any more um, in terms of end products off Matthias Click this season. You know, seven goals, six assists. I think most wingers and strikers would be happy with that, you know, with sort of by sort of January in that lot, um, in terms of end products. So you have to say he's done well from that point of view. He gets himself those goals and I never really lost faith in him. Yeah, you know, I know he's been a little bit out of form, looks a little bit tired, but he's kept going, he's kept going and he played well against Derby, didn't have the best of games against Stoke, but he's more than made up for it today. And to be honest with you, he's got us out of the shit today. You know, if we lost that game today or dropped points, I think there'd be a lot of nerves, you know, going into that Norwich game. We're a little bit more calm now. You know, the Norwich game, I'd say now, a point would not be a disaster. A point would be okay on Saturday. That's the position we're in now. A point would be okay. You know, obviously we want to win the game. We want to win every game. But a point would not be a bad thing. If we draw 1-1, etc, etc, I'm not fussed. We're still going to be in a good position. And that's what today's allowed us. It's allowed us... To an extent, a free hit at Norwich now. We're not under as much pressure now to win that game as we were. You know, if we'd have lost today, drop points, I think there'd be a lot of nerves going into that game. And sometimes nervous energy is good, but I just feel we're going to be a little bit more relaxed going into that Norwich game now. With Norwich dropping points as well. But, you know, let's keep, let's keep going game by game. You know, it's not anything's been achieved yet. I know we've got a six-point lead, but West Brom still got to play. It could be cut down to four points, so we can't get carried away. And certainly, I felt elements of today's performance have shown we have got weaknesses in certain areas. We have got to sort of assess certain things. I do still feel that out and out winger is needed, like a little bit more pace. You know, I think relying on Jack Clark's produced seven, eight, eight, eight nine, ten out of ten performances every week is a bit ambitious. You know, obviously, Jack Clark is an immense talent, he's going to be such a good player. But it's still early, you know, we're still only 18, so we do need that for winger. Um, obviously, Jack Harrison played well today, I felt. I thought it was one of Jack Harrison's best games for us today. But I just don't think we're getting that consistency off Jack Harrison. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, hopefully we've got players to come back in. Uh, quick stat as well for Mateus Glick. He hadn't had a shot on target all season. I'm uh, sorry, all year. I was about to say all season then. All year, according to Joe Wayman. Um, hasn't had a shot on target for four games going into today. Gets himself two goals, you know. It's just superb, you know, from being looking like he's totally out of confidence in front of goal to winning us the game. Absolutely superb for me. Um, in terms of man of the match, it's got to be that man, Mateus Click, at the end of the day. Maybe not the best of first halves for him. Second half, he kept going, he kept going, he kept pressing, controlling that midfield, and it gets himself two goals. How can it not be um, Mateus Click? But quick shouts out to Kiko Casilla, someone who I've not mentioned enough on the preview. Made an absolutely superb save in that second half. Um, probably Rotherham's only proper shot, I think, in that second half. Shot from distance it was a really good shot, good effort. Top corner, big one-handed save. Distribution was superb. I felt maybe in that second half, late on, he did panic on a couple of crosses. Something you don't quite expect on Kiko Garcia. But all in all, you have to say that's a good debut for Kiko Garcia. Nice and solid. Uh, Liam Cooper, Calvin Phillips, I felt was superb at centre-back. 
weren't really tested that much, but I thought both really came out of the past the test with flying colours. You know, we had questions about the aerial height of Michael Smith, and don't get me wrong, Michael Smith was winning a lot of headers, but we were we were very good on the second ball. You know, we were sort of trying to head it on, we were there in front of it. We, we weren't allowing him to head the ball down to people like Will Volks, uh, Ryan Manning, etc, etc. You know, the sort of the more creative players in that lot, which was good to see. We, were, we knew we weren't going to win the header, we won the second ball every single time, which was good. And the ball kept coming back, you know, I don't think Michael Smith really had any joy, to be honest. So other than winning a couple of headers, he couldn't really hold the ball up. You know, Calvin Phillips was constantly winning it back. Liam Cooper was constantly winning it back. I felt that centre-back partnership did really well. I was unlucky not to keep a clean sheet. You know, a stunning goal from distance. There's been much cost in the clean sheet. Obviously, Adam Forshaw, as I mentioned in the preview, had good control in that second half in the midfield. Uh, Jack Harrison had a good game. You know, and all in all, I felt everyone improved in that second half. Everyone went up sort of, a, you know, that extra percent in that second half and it was good to see but we've got to start games better we've got to start games better we can't keep you know making slow starts you know we certainly can't afford it on there uh, on Saturday against Norwich but that Norwich game is still a huge game but we're a little bit more relaxed now going to that I think the pressure is a little bit more on Norwich you know I'm being honest I think we've got a little bit more of a gap you know Norwich dropped points today in a game you probably do expect them to win you know no disrespect to Sheffield United at all but Norwich probably were thinking we could do with winning that. We could same as us, really. You know, winning that game to take that little bit of pressure off against us. They haven't done that. You know, hopefully, you know, I just feel we it's less pressure on us. But it's going to be a great game of football. It's going to be a good game. It's a little bit more tense now after you know, obviously Norwich were confirmed as one of the teams who complained about Spygate and wanted the points deduction. It's going to make it that little bit more tense. But it's going to be just huge, isn't it? It's going to be just a huge game. But yeah, for me today, we got the job done. Maybe we papered over a couple of cracks, but it's nothing that a good signing in January could solve. Yeah, when we saw saw that potential leave, a um, Ivan Cavalera news, I was absolutely made up. Gutted when it turns out it's probably not going to happen. Um, make sure you check out Connor's Friday Night Football as well, talking about Ivan Cavalero and other potential signings in that lot. People like Yannick Balassi, uh, he covered that quite extensively in his Friday Night Football this week, so make sure you check that out. But yeah, I think we do need that other winger. Just think we do need that little bit more pace. Something a little bit different, you know, to change games. Because you look at the bench today, that bench was young. That bench was really, really young, you know, and expecting something to come on and change the game. If you like John Stevens, who's played one game of football last week, is a bit ambitious. But that's not no criticism of Marcelo Bielsa. That's the situation we have with the injuries. It's down to the board now to allow Marcelo Bielsa to sign. If he wants to sign Dan James, let him sign Dan, sign Dan James. As who, you know, I have said I'd rather sign Dan James in the summer, but who on earth? It can tell Marcel Bielsa that Dan, that we can't sign Dan James. You know, you know who you can't say you can't. So if he wants Dan James, let him sign Dan James. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. That's been a review. Rotherham one, Leeds two. Make sure you let us know your thoughts on the game in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've been Oscar Marriott, and we'll see you later.